How's everyone today? Who's awake? Yeah. Amen. Almost felt like we're in school, right? Now let's take attendance. Is someone still here? Class is in session. Amen. I believe that God is doing a, a lot in, within us. That he's just doing uh, tremendous things. Not only in our lives, but in our marriages and our relationships with him. With our families and even with our friends. That there's some type of impact that's being made. And even though at times we don't see it. Or we don't like see a change or a difference. You know, God is always doing something new. God's always doing something. I mean, let's think about this for, for a minute. The only reason why we're here today is because God started a work in us somewhere along the line. We didn't feel it at first because if we felt it, we would have resisted a little bit harder, right? Because we didn't want to give in. We didn't want to fall into serving God. But he, he, met, he works his way in so gently that before we know it, he hooks us. He hooks us and he gets us. And then after that, we just want more of him. It's just like I'm hoping this, uh, this coming up tomorrow that I'm going to hook me a couple fish. First time I'm going to go deep sea fishing. And I'm excited about it. And I'm hoping that I could do the same thing that as I drop my line into that water, that I'm not going to hook a rock. I'm going to hook a rock fish or whatever there is, there is out there. God, I'm going to just have fun with the guys that are going. It's going to be an experience. I can't wait for it. I was told to sit in the front, sit in the back, sit in the middle. Stand, don't stand. So I don't know what's going to happen. I'm going to go all the way around. I'm like, you're right, you're wrong, you're in between. But it's an exciting time. Amen. So we're going to be going into the book of Matthew chapter 25 this morning. Matthew chapter 25. And this morning, God is continuing to build us up. God is continuing to do something in us. And when God is doing something in us, it's considered to be a work. Because we are a work in progress. Because we're not staying the same. There's something little changing in each and every one of us day by day something. It starts from the time that we wake up to the time that we end our day. Something still changed about us. Whether it was someone that affected us, someone that had done something wrong to us, or God just ministering to us throughout the day and being more thankful for what we have, what we have and taking more appreciation for it. But in Matthew 25, we're going to start at verse 14 this morning. It goes on to say, for the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents and to another two, and to another one, to each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. Father, we thank you, Lord, this morning for you, Lord, giving us our talents. For you giving us the ability to do your work. This morning, God, we just thank you, God, for bringing us here together to hear your word. And I pray, Father, let it bring understanding to all of us. Help us, Lord, to just seek you in all these areas of our lives. And Lord, let your word just piss our hearts this morning. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. The ability, the ability, and to the one who gave five talents and give one another, to another one to his own ability and the ability that we're talking about this morning is the overall spiritually and physically we're talking about the ability to do these things god will not give us more than what we can handle he won't give us more than what we can handle because sometimes life brings to us chaos life brings us it's not a box of chocolates it's a box of lactate and it just makes us want to lose it. And we, lose, and we feel like we're losing control of all the situation. And it just comes at us. And God gives us what we're able to handle according to our ability. 
See, this morning, whatever you're facing up to this point in time of day, God has given you the ability to overcome it. Did you not know that this morning? See, it, sometimes it feels like you may be suffering. It's, it feels like, you know what, you're not going to make it to church on Sunday. It feels like, you know what, you don't really want to go to church. But God has given you the ability to make that decision. See, because you're still comprehending, should I go or should I stay? You're still having to decide, should I try to make the effort or should I just stay in bed? See, because the Spirit of God is still on you. The Spirit of God is still on the work. Even though you may not feel it, the Spirit that is within you is saying, you know what? Should I go? You still have that fight between the spirit and the flesh. But God has given you the ability to overcome all obstacles in your life. And the way he gives us the ability is he allows us to go through life itself. Not knowing what's going to take place that week or that day, but whatever takes place that week or that day, God has given you the ability to overcome those things. Why? Because of the talent, the gift things that he has given you. This is how God works. I mean, it, we think about it, and God's given us more than what we ever imagined. God's given us more than what we ever can even comprehend at times. In Luke chapter 11, verse 9, it goes on to say, so I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened for you. See, we, we love this scripture right here. We love it. Why? Because Jesus is saying, knock, ask, seek, and you shall find it. But let's look at it closer this morning. It's not something that falls into your lap. It's not saying seek, and it will be falling into your lap. Ask, and it's just going to fall from the sky. What it's saying, so I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek. That means you have to search. That means sometimes you have to keep searching, that you have to keep seeking it out, that you have to put an effort into it, that you have to dive in and look for it and want it. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. It's not something that will just fall right into your lap. When you seek something, it's because you desire it and because you're pursuing it nonstop. See, this is what seek is. Those of you that are in a relationship right now, your spouse, you sought them somehow. It wasn't just a, a Valentine's Day card, will you be my Valentine and that was it, done deal. No, it took effort. And even today, it still takes effort to seek what makes them happy, to find out what makes them smile. Because you desire to make them happy. You desire to make them feel special. See, when we seek something, that means we're putting our whole heart into it. And this morning, some of us are seeking something this morning. We want to change, we want to break through, but a simple prayer is just not going to cut it. We got to desire it, we got to dig in. Because if we just fell on our laps, guess what that would make us? That would make us like spoiled children. I have the right to this, and I have the right to that. And the first time God takes his time to answer you, guess what will happen? Oh, someone's going to get upset. Someone's going to get bitter. Someone's going to blame God for something. Because it's not happening in their time. But God's timing is always perfect. Verse 16 it says, Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. When it's talking about trade, it's talking about to work, to labor, also to do business. Right here, he did not say the one who received the five talents sat at the table and decided on what to do with those five talents. No. He went and traded with them. It does not say that he decided to wait for another confirmation from God to see if he was going to use those talents. No, he went and he traded them and he started to use them. See, when God gives you something, it's not a time to wait. When God gives you a talent, that does not mean wait for opportunity. That means go and God will give opportunity. God will lead you where you need to go. 
See, if God is giving you something, it's not like, well, where should I go? Where should I go? Where should I go? God will give you the opportunity. But you've got to allow God to do it. That means you have to be open. You have to remain open. You have to remain humble. You have to remain willing to hear his voice. But this guy, this servant, did not waste any time. Right away, he started investing on what he was given. Verse 17, it says, And likewise, he who had received two gained two more. Same thing like the first one. Also did the same, gained more, just as the first, that had the five talents. There was something that was in them that was driving them to go and do this. There was no questions asked. It was, here you are, here's your talents, now go and do something with it. They didn't ask, well, how are we going to increase our talents? They didn't ask, well, what should we do with these talents to, to, make, a, to make abuse of them? They just went and did what they were told. See, when God speaks to us, he's given us something. We shouldn't wait just for something to take place and happen. If God says, I need you to do this, and he's given you the talent to do so, then that means you need to go ahead and skedaddle and go do it. Don't wait for it. Don't, for, don't wait for the spotlight to hit. Don't wait for the train squad to say, come on, you can do it. Don't wait for that. Because now you're just waiting on man. Now you're just waiting to please man. And it's not about pleasing man. Man can't do nothing for you. Besides fail you miserably all the time. Promises are made to be broken according to mankind. And I'm not just talking about men this morning, okay? I'm talking about men and women. I'm talking about God's creation. Promises are broken. Hearts are broken. Headaches are given. Burning the signs are given. But see, when God tells us to do something, it's not waiting. It's just doing it. Why? Because God's given us a talent. So that means you must do it. It's by faith. It's by trusting in God. Verse 18. It goes on to say that, but the one that received that one, just that one talent, he received the one and went and dug it in the ground. He hid it. He hid his Lord's money. He hid it. That was it. He got it and he put it away. He did not try to invest in it. He did not try to do anything with it. He put no effort into it. He was unfaithful and hid what was given to him. He had an opportunity. It may have not been something that he desired. It may not have been something that was according to his own mind that like, this is worth it. It's, this is what I want to do, but God, you have me doing this. He may not have counted it as a privilege, as an honor to have won. And sometimes we need to look at this and what God's given us today. What's that one talent that we have that we're not giving today? What's that one talent that when we do give, we're not even giving it wholeheartedly? We're giving it with circumstantial love based on circumstances on how I'm feeling that day. That's not surrendering God your talent. That's saying, here's my talent, God mixed with my emotion. No one wants to be around that. They hear you say, praise God, and they're looking at you like, well, what else are you going to say? Did you uh, have enough sleep today? Did you have enough sleep last night? Are you doing good this week? And they, they, they get worrisome around you. But this one, he was unfaithful and he hid it. See, you ask God to be used. How many of you want to be used by God? Somehow, somewhere, you, there's something that you want to do. And sometimes we don't even know what it is. We don't know what it is, but we just want God to use us for something. And God gives us that one talent. But we decide not to use it because it may not be noticeable enough. It may not be as far as impactful as we may think it may be. But see, God has given you that talent. So God sees it as very important and very critical for your life. 
See, in our lives, sometimes our talents are just as equal as someone else's, but it's in your ability to handle those talents. See, God gives to those who are able to carry out the task. And sometimes we're like, Lord, I want more, God. I want more talents. I want more good things. I want more of you. I want you to work in my life. And God's like, you're not even using the one talent that I've given you. How can you expect me? You don't have the ability. You can't even understand the importance of carrying out this talent. You have hidden it for so long. It's gathered dust on the shelf. And so many people are waiting for that one talent. Why? Because in a ministry, all the talents need to come together. You can't just have a couple of talents running around. You need the whole ministry. You need all of, God, all of God's people to come together to bring the talents forth. Not everyone knows how to love. Not everyone knows how to encourage. Not everyone knows how to serve. Not everyone, not everyone knows how to pray. I don't have to pray, Pastor. Yeah, but not for people. That's not in your talent. That's not what God gifted you in. Stay in your place. Because you start going like LA traffic, man. You get in the way. You start swerving this, swaying that way. And you're just like, what are you doing? Where did you get your license from? <laughs> Do you not understand that you had to pass a test in order to drive? I mean, have you ever seen that before? But see, God's giving you that talent. And there's a testing in that. And just like that, we just want to go this way and that way and this way because we're looking for something else. And this talent is just, we'll work on it when we have the time. When we have the time, we'll, we'll, we'll put up some use to it. But how can we ask God to multiply our talents if we don't even understand what we have right now? How can we ask God for more if we're not even using the one that we have? Because we don't have the ability to understand the importance of that one, so therefore we don't use it. But how can we ask God for more if we have not even achieved using this one faithfully? You've got to use it faithfully. You want to grow? Use that talent. God will give you more after that. Why? Because then you will understand that there is no holding back. You will understand that it's God and it's not me. You will understand when it comes to obedience that God's going to do it no matter what. You just got to have the step of faith. You got you to you be willing to put yourself out there. Who cares if you're embarrassed? It's for God. Who cares if you can't talk? It's for God. Who cares if they look at you and they make fun of you? They're making fun of God. Not you. You're the one stepping out in faith. They're mocking God. They're mocking the spirit that's within you. If you look at Christianity today, you'll see that that's the most persecuted religion in the world. They don't talk about Muslims. They don't talk about Buddha. They don't make fun of funny videos of them. They're not Christians. They're not God. They're not Jesus. Why? A lot of them say, we don't believe in God, we don't believe in Jesus, but you see videos mocking Christians. Why are they going to come up to the Christians if they don't believe in God? Because there's a lot of people that are in self-denial. There's a lot of people that are willing to fight against the Spirit of God. But God's already given us a victory. We already won. We're already fighting a winning war. But in here, sometimes we feel like we're losing, but we're not. It's as long as we're staying on the rock, which is in Jesus, then we're doing good. That's all that matters. Yeah, you may get, you may, uh, I don't know why I'm going to say seasick. You may get seasick. You may get sick. You may get whatever. You get, get tired of life. But as long as you're on the rock, you will have a stable foundation. God will always give you what you need. Sometimes you don't even have to ask for it. And God just brings in, you're like, man, how did this happen? Because God knows your need. God knows exactly what you need. So before we start asking for God and saying, God, I want to understand this, I want to understand that, we need to go back to the root. What was the first thing that God has given me? And how much have I taken care of that one talent? Before we start stepping in anywhere else, because we have no business going anywhere else except for in the business that God has given us. 
Invest in the talent that God has given you. Because when you invest in it, you forget about everything else. When you invest in God's kingdom, you forget about your own issues and problems. When you invest in God's will, guess what? The world's problems become less and less for you. You stop thinking about the issues. You, start, so you stop thinking about all these things and you start thinking about God. God is my salvation. God has given me hope. God has given me opportunity for eternity. God's given us opportunity for many things. And sometimes we take it lightly because we cannot even fathom the thoughts. Sometimes we sit here and we're like, man, I want to know. I want to know. We could just shake our heads. Yes, I. But deep inside, we've got to understand that he has given it all to us. Yeah, this flesh right here, it's temporary. It's not going to last long. Year by year, we get older. Year by year, we continue to fade. Thank you, Lord. I used to look at age like, man, I don't want to get old, but the sooner I get old, the sooner I go, the sooner I'll make it to heaven. Even though as old as I am, I, I don't know how long I'm going to be this year. Because it doesn't matter to me anymore. Even though my kids and my wife want to say I'm an old fart. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't hurt my feelings. Much. I take it to God. Verse 19, it says, After a long time, the word of the servants came and settled a council. Uh-oh, he's coming back. He's coming back, and he's settling the accounts with them. Uh-oh, here comes the accountability part. Verse 20 says, So he who had received the five talents, I'm pretty sure he came in very happy, came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you rule over many things. Enter to the joy of your Lord because he was faithful in a few things that he has given and it was multiplied. So in that case, he was given much more because he understood and had the ability to understand and take on the responsibilities that were laid upon him. Yes, talents are given, but great is the responsibility to those that it's given to. It's not to say, yes, I can do this, and yes, I can do that, yes, I can. But are you doing it faithfully? Are we doing it unto the Lord? Are we doing it the right way? Because God will hold each and every one of us accountable for what we do and what we don't do. Just like he did with the guy with the five talents. He was happy to see him. I would be happy too. Lord, you started me off with this, but I ended up with this, Lord. Like, this is what you did in my whole life while I was there in the world, and this is what I have left. I want to be happy when I see God. I want to be like, Lord, I did everything that I could and everything that you asked me to, I did it. I made it, I made it full of myself because sometimes I, 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 I wasn't waiting on you, but I still did it. God, I stepped out in faith and I felt humiliated, but it was well worth it to have the experience. Because as adults, we experience life. And so our kids, we can tell them this, 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 and that. Don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, do that. That's good, that's not good. But take our, to take our life experience and the day that we meet God and we're able to tell him about our experience, even though he knows and sees it all, and be able to say, Lord, I did all of this for you. And to take off that crown and be like, you know what, Lord, I don't want this. I just want to be in heaven. I had enough of the world. I had enough of the flesh. I'm tired. I just want to rest for eternity. That's the day that I look forward to. Romans 14, verse 12. It says, So then each of us shall give account of himself to God. So each of us should give an account of ourselves to God. That means accountability will be what each and every one of us experience. 
each and every one of us will go through that. We'll be accountable for what we do, what we didn't do, what we did, what we didn't do, and so forth and so forth. How we treated others, how we treated everyone. How we just turned people off and then just shoot them away to everything. You name it, it's in the back of your head. We're accountable for that. Knowing that we serve a God and our responsibilities are to take care of them. Turn them away. To love them as much as possible. Because sometimes people aren't easy to love, right? They're not easy to love. They're not. Why? Because they have issues. How many of you have issues? We all have issues. We all have issues. Some of us have bigger issues than others. Some of us made bad choices in life. Some of us made really bad choices in life. Once you're ready, fan, that's it. You're done. You, you, you're marked. That's it. You, that's it. Every, every, every city kicks them out. They went from LA to Oakland and Vegas and whatever happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, so we don't know what's going to happen with them there either. I love my people. I love them. I love the people from the in the church that are Raider fans. They have a, always a good sense of humor. I love them, man. They're always they're always happy. They're always like, man, that was a good one. Wait until next time, Pastor. I'm gonna get you. I'm like, yeah, I know they will. I gotta go check my tires after I leave service for today. Make sure that they're still headed up. <laughs> Cause they can get crazy. And they could get crazy for God. And see, they, they make choices just like the rest of us. We could be crazy, but we could be crazy for God just as much. And we could still make an impact for God just as much as we could in the world even today. It's just a simple choice. Are we going to do this or are we going to do that? What choice are we going to make today? How are we going to make it today? How is it going to be allowed for, for it to flow out from us today? Because whatever we do and whatever we don't do, we are taking accountability for. It's just like on the streets. You get caught. You pay for what you got caught for. You didn't get caught, guess what? You had no accountability for that crime that you committed. And then you were like, Phew. you didn't have to sweat it. Until you hear a knock at midnight. And you hear that. <laughs> and you're like, out the back door. We all make choices and we all take repercussions from them. Verse 22 goes on to say that, and they were exceedingly sorrowful. Oh, I'm sorry. My bad. I'm going into the time where Jesus was talking about he has to go and be crucified. Verse 22 goes on to say, he also who received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered me Two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things and into the joy of your Lord. He is even faithful to the few things. The few things that he had, one or two, two three things. He was faithful to that. He invested into that. He gave into that. He didn't look at the other guy and say, well, Lord, why did he have five talents? Why does he have ten talents? Why does he have more talents? I only have like three. What is this? I'm being gypped. What is this? How come he does and I don't? Because sometimes we can look at each other. How come they can do all these things and I could barely even do this? Well, because they understand something. It's because they've been tried through life. They understand what it takes. They have the ability to carry things through. They have proven themselves. They have taken what God has given them and they run with it no matter what. Even though there is no faith in it, even though there is no belief in it, even though it doesn't make sense, they still run with it because God instructed them to do it. So they have the ability and the talent to get things done. How do you see that, how we grow today? How do we grow today? 
the same exact way. Exercising our talents gives us the ability to take on more things. So the one that only had the few said, you know what, I'm going to take this opportunity. I'm going to invest into this. And it was doubled. And therefore, even after that, I will make you rule over a few things. He was given a little bit more. A little bit more talents. A little bit more responsibility. See, when we think about talents, we think about, you know, how God can use us. But when we think about talents, we also have to understand that's responsibility. That's responsibility equals accountability. And accountability means that means we're going to be held accountable by Christ. What did you do with the things that I have given you? With the people that I put in front of you, what have you done with them? Especially for leaders, ministers and pastors, the accountability is very, very much high. Because everything and anything that we say is it's under a microscope, pretty much. God watches everything that we do. So if you're desiring for it to be a pastor or a minister, be ready to receive the talents. Be ready to receive the ability. But remember, you will receive accountability. Because sometimes it can be nerve-wracking. And the things that we do for God, it could be nerve-wracking. Well, is this what God wants? Is this what God really wants to do? And then you really have to see God in it. You really have to know that this is God and God's going to do it. And the pressure's on. It's kind of like at work. You have a supervisor and then you have associates. How many of you can understand that? You have a supervisor, man, they wait on you. If you don't say what they like, guess what? I'm going to complain to HR. Well, some people go complain to God. Something, something that you say is not going to vibe with them. They're going to resist. They're going to fight. They're going to disagree. They're going to bite you back. But all in all, the responsibility of the supervisor is to make sure that everything is still being done and taken care of in an orderly fashion, that whatever is at task at hand is being completed by the end of the day. And having that pressure and a timeline of when to get it done because when God wants something done, it's not about, okay, I'm going to wait next month. No, when God says, I want it done, I want it done. And there's no holding back. It's ready or not. Here we go. And sometimes the circumstances are not looking like the, the way they should, but it's a time to act. And this is where you have to understand that, you know what, God is with us. With us. God is with me. God is with you. And we just got to go with it. We just have to do it. It's not waiting for the perfect storm. It's just having to go to it so that God can create the perfect circumstances for that thing that he wants to do. Jeremiah 7, 23. Jeremiah 7, chapter 7, verse 23. says, But this is what I commanded them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and you shall be my people. And walk in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well with you. That it may be well with you. The more that we invest in what God has given us, we are living well. We are living well. We're living a lot better off than what we would living in the world. Because even in the world, we couldn't find peace. In the, even in the world, we couldn't find that happiness. And in God, we found it all. But there's times where we're like, you know what? I could do better off. Yeah, even in the world, you could do better off, but your circumstances were a lot worse. But when we're doing it to the Lord, and we're being obedient, and if we listen to His voice, and we're doing what He asks, guess what? We are left off better. We're living our lives well and to the fullest. It doesn't, say, it doesn't say you will be comfortable the rest of your days. You will be able to sleep in all day and all night and get heavenly rest and wake up fully in righteousness and fully rejuvenated to your full potential and you're going to be flying like angels all around the world. It doesn't say none of that. It says that you're better off. 
that you're going to be better off. I'd rather wake up, have my circumstances be messed up, watch the day, uh, sometimes they happen and know where they are, or it comes to pass or things happen, and just be like, well, Lord, well, I don't know what's going to happen, but I know you're going to take care of me. I don't know how. I would rather feel that way than, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Uh, uh, I, I, I don't know what to do. And start panicking. And start thinking. And start figuring out what I'm going to do. I would rather be at peace with God. Saying, Lord, I don't know what you're going to do. I can't do nothing. You allowed it. You allowed it for a reason. Because whatever happens in my life, you allow it. So if this is taking place in my life, Lord, what are you trying to show me? I know you're going to take care of me the rest of this time. But you allowed it. Because I'm faithful to you. Because, Lord, I pray to you. I abide in you. And as you abide in me, I don't have to worry about trying to make things meet. So what are you going to do, God? I don't know what you're going to do. I, don't, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep going to church. I'm going to keep preaching you. I'm going to keep talking to, G, talking to everyone about you. That's all I can do. And then you're going to figure out the solution to, the, to my problem. So much better. So much better that way. Why? Because you don't have to worry about anything. Just being faithful. That's all it is. It's just being faithful. Verse 24 says, And he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you had to be a hard man. He, 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 was, he had to be a hard man. Reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid. How many of us use that word? I was afraid. I was nervous. I was not sure what was going to happen. I was uncertain. But he said, I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. Let me dig it up real quick. Let me dust it off real quick here. Because I know that you're a hard Lord. And because I'm scared, I'm in fear of you. I didn't want to lose it, so I hid it. I put it on the shelf. I buried it right here and X marks the spot so I know exactly where to go where I left it at because I never picked it up from that point on because I decided to leave it because sometimes some of us need to go back and get that one gift. Some of us need to go back and get that one talent that we buried a long time ago because it's still there. God still has given you the opportunity. If you still have it, if you still remember that, if there's a little peace in your heart and you still like, man, I remember that, but you still find it, that means God still has given you that talent to use. You still have the ability to go back and pick it up. But he said he was, a, he was afraid, it was in fear, which either causes us to either run away or hide. How many of, us, how many of you have ever run away or hid from God? I think we all have. I think we all have. Especially when we started fearing what God wanted to do and it was way out of our comfort level. And the most part of it, why we do this, it's because we tend to overthink things. Knowing the Bible does say, overthink whatever God tells you and it will be done. It doesn't say that in there. It says by faith, by obedience, by trust, by obeying His word, by making Him your solid foundation. And Jesus, this is how I says to do it, not by overthinking, because Jesus knows that we will fail when it comes to our stinky thinking. Why? Because when we think of something, it's always about sticking excuses, sticking this, sticking that. All these things that the world has trouble doing. But as Christians in faith, thinking like, you know what, God's going to do it. That talent that he was given was not invested into, but it was hidden. It was put away. And when it says in verse 24, it's talking about him being a hard man. He used this as a false statement. He used this as a false statement because of this failure, not wanting to invest. He failed to trust what he was given. He failed to trust, to believe that which he was given, he had the ability to use. He had the ability to put forth. He had the ability to invest in. He did not have that mindset. But instead, he had doubts. 
and his Lord. He put all these false accusations on his Lord, saying, you are a harsh man. So he put all these excuses into place so that he didn't have to stand accountable to it because he took the coward way out. He took the coward way out. He took the excuse after excuse way out. Well, Lord this and Lord that. No, he gave it to you. There is no excuse. God chose you to use that gift. I mean, God has other words for it. Foolish, lazy servants. And Luke. But I figured I'll be a little bit nice today. Oh yeah, it, it says that. It says that. Turn to the book of Luke. Remember, the two books line up. And you'll see exactly what it says. And you'll be like, you know what, pastor was nice today. He was afraid of, to face his master while the other two were happy to see him. He did not want to see his master because he knew what was coming to him. He knew in the back of his mind that he didn't do what was right. He knew in the back of his mind he didn't do what was right. So once his master started coming, guess what? Here's, here's the excuses right here, master. You're a hard man and, and you're asking me to do this one talent and this one talent. I could not understand it. I could not think about what it was and here... You, all these excuses for what? For nothing. He was still held accountable. He was still held accountable just as the other two. As it says in verse 26, it says, But his Lord answered and said to him, You wicked and lazy servant. Oh, well, there he is again, too. I guess we didn't get away from that, did he? Some of you feel even the head. You, you see that you're like, Oh, he also says it in Matthew. And in Luke. It's crazy how God doesn't let us kind of even get away from that either, right? But the Lord said to him, You wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seeds. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers, and at my coming I would have received back my own interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one that has ten talents. Take it from him. Pull it away from him. Disarm him. Take away and give it to the one that was faithful. Give it to the one that understands and that was willing to go without questions. Give it to the ones that were willing to go without having to have so much doubt to where it stopped them dead in their tracks. Give it to the one that has the ability to do it because they have proven themselves to do it. You give it to that one and take it away from him because he has no understanding. All he has are just excuses. All he has are just false accusations. All he has is just doubts. All he has is just this and it says right here. Wicked and lazy. Wicked and lazy. Sometimes we can get lazy. We can get lazy. When the weather changes, guess what? It's too hot. It's too cold. It's too something. And we blame it on the weather. <laughs> we blame it on the weather. Or we blame it on our bodies. But God's given you the ability, physically, mentally. He's given you the talent, spiritually. So those, those excuses are, are void. But see, God knows our circumstances. So God will use us exactly where we can be used. It doesn't matter where we're at. God will still use you no matter what. See, he, he knows our circumstances change. And as long as you're willing, He'll use you just the way you are. Just the way you are. You need a bullhorn, but we'll get you a bullhorn. Some of you, we won't give you a bullhorn because you won't know how to stop. Uh-uh. Put a time limit on that baby right there. One minute, that's all you do. It's one minute. And all you hear is like the, like the auctioneer. Hey, how come this thing's not working? Hey, how come this thing's not working? But God will use you wherever you are. But you have to be willing. Verse 29 in closing says, For to everyone who has more will be given, and he will have abundance. 
But from him who does not have, even that he has will be taken away. And cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. If you see this right here, what Jesus said at the very end. I'm not talking about the weeping and gnashing of teeth, but I'm talking about to the servants. He still considered them as servants. He didn't say nothing else. He didn't say this, 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 uh, the slave, this, anything. He, a servant, because those that he has close to him, he calls them servants. And even in that, this is how much that even no matter what has to be done, he still considers us one of his. Even though we come to that place of not wanting to do it, he still considers us worthy. He still considers us his own. God doesn't change his mind like we do. When God says something, he wants it done, and he wants it done, and he'll give you the ability to do so. So this morning, it's going back to that one ability. It's going back to that one talent that God has given us. Saying, Lord, what have I done with that talent? What do you want me to do with that talent? Because I'm searching for a place to start, but I don't know where to begin. And God's just saying, you know what? It's that talent, that talent that you put away a long time ago. That talent is going to bring you breakthrough. That talent is going to be a life changer for you. It's about taking that talent, dusting it off, and saying, Lord, here I am. I trust in you, and I believe in you. And I'm just going to start all over again. Amen. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this morning, for your word. Father, I ask my God that you continue, Lord, to.